Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I'm going to show you how to take a 2D still and turn it into a 3D scene. So that's the finished scene and this is the still that we're going to be working from. So let's get going. So for this project I'm going with 1920-1080, 24 frames a second and a duration of 10 seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do is come to import and I'm going to bring in this image that's from pexels.com. I will give you a link in the description where you can download it. So import this image. So let's come over to properties. I just want to scale it so it fits the frame and I'm going to set the scale to 37. Now you may not be able to notice but you probably will if I turn on the grid that there's a little bit of lens distortion here. You can see here particularly with this upright that it's kind of like curving around a little bit. So there is a filter that you've probably never used for this purpose in motion that is going to help us out and that is filters distortion and fisheye. Why did they call it fisheye? Really silly idea because it actually is a lens distort filter albeit a very basic one. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the radius to 1.33 and because we want to undistort the lens we are going to set the amount to negative one and it doesn't seem like much but it is I toggle that on and off, you can probably see it's actually helping to make this a little bit more upright. I'm just going to grab this and by experiment I discovered if I move it down to there, so the bottom of this pillar, it does just about what I want it to do. I mean it's not going to be perfect but it's just going to make life a little bit easier I think if the uprights are a bit more straight. So now we're good to go and we can make a clone of this layer. So right click make clone layer and I'm going to drag it out into a new group and I'm going to turn off the original group. So I'm going to call this group left and then very importantly I now need to select the clone layer not the group. Make sure you do that please. So I'm just going to turn off the grid while we do this because it's not helping particularly. So I'm going to come down and I'm just going to select the crop tool and I'm going to crop till we get to that corner where those two walls meet and I'm going to crop up from the bottom just till we get to that bit where the wall meets the floor. I'm going to switch over to the transform tool and center ourselves up a little bit. Don't have to do this but it's just a little bit easier. Just center that into the frame and then let's select the distort tool. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try and line these up with the bottom corners. So I'm going to drag that one over there, drag this one over here. Just need to zoom out just enough to do it. Drag that one over there, drag this one up like this. I'm just going to do it roughly to start off with. And then just want to make sure the floor is lined up like that and that this is not going beyond the edge of the frame. Similarly here. So that's fairly good for the floor. But what we now need to do is we need to cancel out this perspective distortion. So what I want to do is I'm going to turn on view rulers and I'm going to sort of draw a ruler, I don't know, somewhere like this, I think. Maybe a little bit, little bit higher. Let's go a little bit higher like that. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. So I'm going to drag this one down like that and drag this one up like so. And now we're actually pretty good. Just a little bit of fine tuning there, maybe pull this one down a little bit. So now we've got that more or less lined up. So then what we can do is we can select the group itself, set the X anchor point to 960, open up the rotation and set the Y rotation to 45 degrees. So this is our left hand wall that's now correctly in perspective. Let's now reselect the original layer, the one with the fish eye on it, and let's again let clone it. Make clone layer, drag it out into a new group, call this group right, and we're going to go through the same process. So then very importantly we need to not select the group but the clone layer inside of it. I'm going to stress this because it's really important. Select the clone layer, not the group. Make sure you've got the crop tool selected. Crop in from the left like that till we're 
getting to the point where those two walls meet and crop to the floor level from the bottom like that. Select the transform tool and line ourselves up a, bit, a little bit like that. And then reselect the distort tool. And then let's line ourselves up with the corners down here at the bottom. So our floor is level with the bottom of the frame. And then we're going to line up that window level like that as we did before. So be a little bit of toing and froing, but not much like this. And drag this one up like that. Always making sure to align ourselves with the edge of the frame like so. I think we've done a pretty good job there. OK, so then we can reselect the group and we can set its anchor point to negative 960 and its Y rotation to negative 45. And then we can turn back on the other group. Made a little bit of a mess of that because I didn't quite crop it enough. Let's zoom in. Uh, one or other of these crops is wrong. So let's just maybe try this right hand one. And we just need to crop in a little bit more on the left like that. And then we'll just need to move ourselves over a little bit with the distort tool like that. So that's not too bad. So now what we can do is we can add a camera. So object camera, switch to 3D. Let's turn back on our overlays. And I'm just going to move this guide to the zero position there. So make it a little bit easier. I'm going to select these two groups, the right and left, like that, command clicking them, come over to properties. And what I want to do is I want to line the floor to the zero line. So I'm going to scroll in the Y field until that's lined up with the floor like that. Then I just need to uh, do a little bit of rotation on the camera. So we're looking down, so negative six or something. So what remains to be done is to add in a floor. So we're going to select our original group. We're going to right click, make clone layer, drag this out into a new group at the top there, call this floor. What we're going to do first of all is rotate this floor group through negative 90. And then I'm going to come to the top view. I'm going to make absolutely sure to select the clone layer. I'm going to come in and select the crop tool and I'm going to crop down to floor level. Bearing in mind the floor is sort of going, kind of going around the corner there. I can only crop to this right hand corner and then we can reselect our distort tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and drag it down to roughly where the camera is. I'm going to take this and drag it roughly over here. I'll come back to him in just a second. I'm going to drag this one to that point there, which is the corner of the two walls. And then I'm going to drag this one down to the edge of that right hand wall. And I just need to adjust this so the actual floor image is aligning with this left hand wall. So something like this. This one we can adjust to taste. Let's maybe go to there, just a little bit beyond the camera. So now we can switch back to the active camera view and we are good to go. We've got our room. We can rotate around. We can zoom out quite a bit and we can move up and down like that. Haven't done anything about the ceiling because we don't really have enough information there in the image to do anything about the ceiling. So there are limits to how far we can travel with this, but we can start to have fun with this. So I'm going to come back over to my camera, just reset it, and I'm going to add some ramp behaviors. So we've got a basic animation in here. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. First of all, I'm going to open up the project that I'm going to give you called default box. This is going to be inside the assets folder for you and open this up as a new project, copy it. So right click copy, come back over to our tutorial project here and let's just paste this in. So there's that box. Let's come to the top view and I just want to move this box to somewhere like that and switch back to the camera view. Doesn't look much yet but it will when we've got the camera and the lights all sorted. So let's come back to our camera. We've reset the position and rotation and let's add some ramp behaviors to it. So let's maybe start off with the Y position. So add parameter behavior and ramp. Let's have a start value of 530 and an end value of 300. So we're flying down a little bit. Come back over to properties. Let's target the Z position, add parameter behavior ramp. Let's have a start value of 1000, end value of 700. 
Let's come back over and target the X rotation, add parameter behavior ramp. Let's start with a negative nine and end with positive three. And finally, the Y rotation, add parameter behavior ramp. And let's start with negative 35, end with positive 50. And I got a little bit carried away with my number dictation there. I've given you a Z position end value of 7,000, which is obviously way too much. That was meant to be 700. So now if you run the animation, we get this. We're rotating around. We're seeing our big fat cube sitting there on the floor. And we're ending here. Now let's add some lighting. So let's come to Add Object Light. Let's give it a little bit of warmth and let's add a randomized behavior to the intensity. So add parameter behavior, randomize, and let's set the apply mode, subtract, and the amount to 50. So this is just going to give us a sort of flickering inside the factory, as it were. But we need to actually position this light. So let's come over to properties, set its X position to negative 720, Y position to 720, Z position to, I don't know, to 1000. So there you go, we've got this dramatic flickering there, quite good. So then what I want to do is I want to make my windows see through and we can do that as follows. So let's come back into our original group and select this layer and let's choose right click isolate and it isolates that original layer, reset our zoom, and let us come to filters and mask and keying and luma keyer. Let's switch to this middle tab here, middle view tab like that, so we can actually see the key. And let's grab the black value and then just drag it till all we can see are the windows like that. What we need to do is we need to switch back to our view mode and we need to invert. And you can already see that we're seeing through those windows with those, those lovely cracks and that, all that, that really grungy dirt. So then we want to unisolate this group. So right click isolate. Then we can add in a new group and import from the assets folder, dramatic sky. Let's move this group all the way to the back. Let's come over to properties. Let's set the Z position to negative 4,000 and the scale to 500 and then come back into our original layer there. It's quite large, so we need to reset it to 100%. So we won't really see very much at this point because it's not being lit. But if I turn off the light, you should be able to see that we can actually see that sky moving behind that glass like so. So then let's turn back on this light and let's add a new light object light. So for this light, let's set its position to something like negative 720 and come over to the light. Let's make it a little bit blue, I think, a little lightning color. Let's set its intensity to 5000. You can now very clearly see the sky being lit up. And now let's add parameter behavior randomized to that intensity. Let's set the amount to 20,000 and the apply mode to subtract. Uh, let's reduce the frequency down to five and the noisiness down to 0.2. And now we're going to get these nice flashes in the sky like that. And then we can duplicate this light. So right click duplicate. Let's come over to its position. Let's set the Y position to something like a thousand and the Z position to positive a thousand. And let's come back over to behaviors. Let's click on the random seed a few times, or you can see that's really, really bright. A little bit too bright, maybe. Let's turn off the randomize, come back over to the light, set the intensity down to maybe 2500. So let's have a look at how that's looking. So we're getting these really dramatic flashes inside the room that are slightly out of sync with the ones on the outside. And I think that's quite a, a nice way of approaching it. I mean, you're probably better off keying these so that's all happening exactly where you want them but that's quite good and i'm actually going to set both of these lights to have shadows so let's actually park somewhere where we can see this so i'm going to turn on shadows for this and you can see we've got that nice shadow on the floor there turn on the shadows for this probably less obvious what's going to happen there but just having shadows even though they're only there for a very short time just helps to sell it a bit 
Finally, I think that sky now with our lighting is a little bit too colourful. So let's select the sky. Let's come to colour, hue, saturation. Let's just reduce the saturation to something like negative 0.5. So then I think that's a little bit better with that reduced saturation. So anyway, lots you can play with. And I'm sure you're going to want to put some torrential rain behind those windows, for example. And, you know, you can put loads more boxes in here. Let's do that. Let's put, add, duplicate the box. Let's uh, scale it down to, I don't know, 50%. Just position it somewhere different. You know, the more items you have in the scene, the more sense of 3D depth you're going to get. So anyway, I hope you have fun playing with that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.